Hello, welcome to the demo on EasyOffice Inventory's asset lifecycle. Before I jump into that, I'd like to give you a little background on EasyOffice Inventory. We are a cloud-based solution that was launched in 2011. We have thousands of clients worldwide. Our competitive price models and innovative features have led us to become the first choice for medium to large enterprise businesses looking to track their items. Now let's dive right into the demo. When users log in, it will take them to the dashboard. Before I go into details on these features, I wanna to touch on a very useful tool, our help feature. You click on the help tab and it gives you quick tips here and the ability to search our knowledge base for blogs and articles to help you find what you are looking for. The nice thing about this feature, it is it is dynamic and it follows you from one page to the other, providing information relevant to the page you're on. On the dashboard, you have a number of widgets that can be personalized. You can click edit, add or edit widgets and have a variety of options to choose from. So when you do log into the dashboard, it will have information pertinent to your daily operations. It'll basically give you a snapshot of what's going on with the platform and how you can proceed accordingly. We have a notification bell here that alerts you on anything that needs actions to be taken on. We have availability calendars, settings, and also an option to add items. Speaking of items, if you look over to the banner on the left, we have a number of modules, including, of course, our items. We have three different categories of items, assets, assets, stock, and inventory. Assets are items that are serialized and tracked individually. Asset stock are items that you're tracking by quantity. And inventory are items that are consumable, things that are being checked out and not expected to return. Let's take a look at our asset page. Welcome to the asset page. Before I dive into this, I wanna to touch on a couple other features. One is our custom fields feature. If there is a data field that does not exist and you do need it, custom fields will allow you to place it pretty much across all the modules in the platform. All you do is simply click add custom field, name the custom field, select your data type. You can add default values, placeholders and choose from a list of preferences. You can also associate groups with them. The next features I want to discuss are called bundles and packages. These features are for items that are checked out together on a regular basis. So you can predefine these said bundles or packages with those items and check them out in one action. The main difference between the two is packages are made up solely of assets. Bundles can span across all three item categories. And in order to select one once they're created, just go to the section, select the bundle, and add it to the cart. That said, let's continue back to the asset page. On the asset page, there's a number of options you have to add assets. First is manual. Simply click add asset and fill out all the information regarding that asset, name, product, model numbers, uh, any groups, subgroups, and so on. You can also add the cost price, the vendor, any salvage values, locations and the date purchased on. If you notice these two icons here, if a vendor or location is not pre-existing in the system, you can click on this icon to add them on the fly. Once all that is done, you just click done and the item has been created. The other way you can add items is via scanning. We have iOS and Android mobile apps that do have built-in scanners. So a user can simply scan a barcode or a QR code and fill out the data form similar to what we had just seen. Once that's complete, it'll be added to the system. 
This also works with handheld scanners as well. The other option, if you have large quantities of items, is to use an import. Simply click Import, Add New Asset, upload your Excel spreadsheet, and map out the items, and it'll pull it into the system. And I do want to touch on mapping out. Basically, what you're doing is you're trying to select in the drop down the same column title that you have on your spreadsheet. So you're just going to mimic them. And then once that gets pulled in, your items will be populated. We have some other actions you can take here. You can do quick actions or mass actions. So you can select an item or items, select the actions icon, and choose which action you would like to take. A very popular feature is our transfer of custody. This is where two users can meet somewhere. One of them can scan an item, accept custody, and then take possession. This eliminates the need of having to go through checking it in at the office and then checking it back out to the other user. It's more of a handoff approach. As you see here on the column heads, you can customize these accordingly. Just hit the pencil and select your desired option from the dropdown. If it's not available, your custom fields are always going to be at the bottom under the dotted line. You can filter the list views by any of these options or add more filters. Or you can select views by groups, names, or packages. We also have a grid view available if you'd like to see that. And you can, again, select your items, take all the same actions, filters, just like the list view. Let's take a look at an item detail page. When you open up the item detail page, you'll see all the information that you entered while adding that item will be displayed here. And you also have your custom field as well. Along with that, you have your history of services, carts, any integrations with Zendesk or Jira, the tickets will populate in this area your reservation history, packages, events, and any related work orders. Speaking of work orders, we also have the ability to start service events on the fly, or you can schedule them in advance. To check out an item directly to a user, you simply click check out, select your user, location if like, the date it will do back in, any necessary comments, and check out the item. You can also reserve items as well. Another option you can do is add them to carts. You click on more and you add to cart. Once it's been added, you'll see a banner that will identify the cart number. Uh, some other actions you have here is adding to a purchase order, again, a package. You can replace it with another asset in a cart, printing, and you have your item history along with your check in and out history. If you scroll down to the bottom, you'll notice a files section. Here you can upload documents and images um, it could be warranty information, receipts, MSDS information, images, or signature captures if required in your workflow. We also have our comment section. Any comment that you put in here is also searchable in our search bar. This comes in very handy. If you have multiple of the same assets, and you can't remember which one you needed to refer to, you can type the comment in here and the search results will yield that exact item. Now let's take a look at asset stock.
as you can see, it's very similar to the asset section. All the add-in options are the same, manually scanning via import. Uh, you have the same column head options. You have your mass action options here as well. Let's take a look at an asset stock detail page. The asset stock detail page is really nearly identical to the asset detail page. You have all the product information here, groups, locations, uh, you have vendor information, descriptions, again you have your custom fields here. If you scroll down you have your quantities by location and again you also have the files section and the comments section. So if you wanted to look at a location you can open one up You have your location ID number, status is active. You can check on any items related within that location as well. So you can see here, text storage room. And from the location page, you are also able to add to cart. Add to current cart. While we're on the location page, let me give you a little more broader example of how our locations work. Okay, on our location page, just like our items, you can add locations manually or you can do them in bulk by import. Again, they have filters of locations. Uh, you also have assets and scans by locations and also a list view. And if you look here, what you're seeing are parent locations. And any of these triangles indicates what we call a nested location. So what this allows you to do is put locations within a location. Uh, so for the Austin office complex, you can see there's four buildings. If you wanted to identify an office within that building, you click on the triangle and you can identify the office. You can nest underneath that office storage closet in the northwest corner. Under that, you can say second shelf, third bin, etc., And that will take you to the exact location of where that item belongs. Now that you've seen the locations, let's go ahead and finish up with our items, the final being inventory. Like I said earlier, inventory is nearly identical to asset stock. It has all the same features. Um, you add the same way. Uh, also, you can export all your items to a CSV for assets, asset stock, and inventory categories. Now let's take a look at an inventory detail page. Again, it's the same as the asset stock. You have quantities by locations. You have your files and comments section. But the main and pretty much only differences are here. Instead of a direct checkout for inventory, it is a remove stock, because remember, this, these are consumables. But you can still reserve them and add them to carts as well. Speaking of carts, let's move over to our cart module. On our cart module, we have our current cart and we have our cart transaction tab. It does have related details here available. You can set an identification number, destination location, and again, you can add one on the fly if need be. It tells you when it's created on cart descriptions, and then again, custom fields. If you want to add a cart while you're, add items to a cart while you're here, you can simply type the name or asset number and select add. If you scroll down to the bottom here, you can see the two items that I have added are sitting there. And again, files and comment sections. 
Again, you can reserve carts, you can check them out, and you can take a few more actions. You can move your items, you can empty the cart, print it, or export it to CSV or PDF. Let's go ahead and check out the cart. Click check out. You select a user. Let's go with good old Mr. Chuck McCheckouts. You can set your destination locations, details, and when it's going to come back. So we can say set changes to 16th. And I want to touch on checkout indefinitely. This is a great option for, say, an employee that gets a laptop, smartphone, and a laptop case assigned to them, and it's theirs throughout the duration of their position or until it needs to come in for service or gets replaced. All you do is select checkout indefinitely, and you don't have to worry about the tracking the dates of return on them. Now when you look at this, you notice that they're broken down by item category. So once you have all that, you just check out the item. And you're all set. It shows checked out. Now we can take a look at our cart transactions. We have our current cart and we have our cart transactions. You can filter by the status of the cart or you can do all carts. And get an idea of what's going on with everything coming and going in the platform. Now that you've seen carts, let's go ahead and touch on the reports. We have a robust selection of pre-made reports. If there's a report that you need and is not available, you have the ability to create a custom report. Simply go to custom reports, go view report, you can select the module you want to run your report on. We'll just stay with items for now. You could add any other related modules and come down here to select your columns. So we could say custody, uh, net quantity, run report. It will yield your data down below. And the nice thing about custom reports is that you can save them and schedule them. So if you need a periodic report, you can create the custom report and have that automated and sent to your inbox um, at whatever desired interval. Another thing I forgot to touch is the filters, other filters related to them. So you have a number of options to kind of streamline your reports. Like all of our other reports, you can export them to CSV PDF or XLS formats, and there are integrations with Dropbox and OneDrive available. And the last thing I want to touch on is our members section. It looks very similar to our items. You can add them manually, you can add multiple at a time, and you can also import through XLS. You can update and update the address book. Another way to bring your members in is through an integration uh, via Okta, OneLogin, G Suite, SAML, or LDAP. And as you look at the, the member list page, just like the items, you can personalize this to get the information that you want to see pertinent to your users. You can see there's different statuses of them, non-login, active, unconfirmed. Now, unconfirmed will not allow anybody in the system until they are confirmed. You can filter by your statuses here and also take actions on them as well. Touch on another feature called custom roles. Custom roles gives you the ability to add enhanced access or permissions to the standard roles supplied by the system. And to create that, you just click Add Role. You name the role. 
if you want to restrict by groups, locations, or both, you can do so. Teams. And then you can touch on your permissions. And you can get really granular with all the permissions you could allow within these roles. So basically, it allows you to take our standard roles and provide enhanced permissions and access to certain users. You can see here you can create a number of them. That about wraps up the demo. If you have any questions at any time, feel free to email support at easyofficeinventory.com. And thank you so much for viewing. Wish you the best and be well.